Hey, what's up, everybody? Professor Keith here again. Want to go over another indicator with you guys. Uh, let's see if we can figure out a little bit deeper detail on things. And uh, I want to show you a really cool indicator that we use all the time uh, in conjunction with our other indicators <clears throat> to help you get a better gauge for what's going on in the market, what the price action is doing, and how it works, okay? Let's just kind of jump on into it here. Let me pull this software down out of the way. Uh, this should be much better audio than the last video. Uh, had the wrong microphone selected because I got a new webcam. And it has a built-in microphone and it did not work the way I wanted it to. So anyway, this, this indicator is called the RSI or the Relative Strength Index. Uh, if you're looking for this indicator, then you just need to click right up here on Indicators, type in the word relative, R-E-L-A-T-I-V, and you see it pops up here, Relative Strength Index. I've already got a star by mine that made it a favorite. Once you click it on your favorites, you should. These are going to be your list of favorites. I have a lot of different indicators. I use them for all different things, all different time frame tradings, options, futures, leverages, margins, whatever, uh, regular trades. doesn't matter to me. I change it up and have all different kind of indicators that I like to use for different situations. But we're going to talk about the Relative Strength Index today. Now, what is the Relative Strength Index? Basically, it's the indicator that tells you the strength of a buy or the strength of a sell. Okay, it's pretty common sense. Um, it's, it's a good indicator. It's not perfect. Uh, but it helps you out a lot in deciding when to buy and when to sell, okay? In between, it's a little, a little iffy, but it helps you out a lot, okay? So I've already pulled it up and I got it hidden here. I'm going to open it up. There we go. Um, as you can see, if you just look at it, it kind of mimics the price, but not perfectly, okay? All right, so let's get into the RSI. I'm going to make it bigger here so we can see. Um, simply put, there are four parts to the RSI. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have four lines, um, four parts. Up here in the purple zone, which is what you're going to look back and see that most of the trading happens in the purple zone. Remove that little green circle. A lot of this trading is happening in here. Usually the trading happens in here. Not always, but for the most part, that's where it happens. Um, this is the normal trading area. Nothing wrong with the price being in here. It's just doing its thing and the price action lets it flow as such. Okay. The white zone above the purple zone. Okay, this is called the overbought zone. Overbought sound any good to you? Um, no. So if you had something that was overbought, you wouldn't want to buy more of it. You'd want to buy less or sell it. Okay. Likewise, the zone below is oversold. Oversold. Anything above this purple zone and below this purple zone are either overbought or oversold. It's pretty common sense, okay? Essentially, when we see a top, when we see a price jump up here into the overbought zone, we're looking for a sale area, okay? We're going to start marking potential sale areas as soon as it breaks out into the white zone. So, as you see here, this was a potential sale area. It broke into the white. We should have been watching. So it was all of this. You know, had another one right here. Another potential sale area. And and once we peaked up here, a big potential sale area. Okay? I'm going to mark those with vertical lines. Right there. Another vertical line here. And let's just put one here. Okay? I won't go too far back in history. Let's just use this right now. And then we'll move along more. Okay? You also see I have a black line right here. We'll get to that in just a second. All right, now if we look at our relative strength index in terms of the price, let's extend these red lines on up a little bit. Anyone who doesn't have TradingView or know how to use TradingView, uh, it's pretty common sense, but they have a whole other video based on TradingView that you can watch and tell you how things work and all the different tools you can use, et cetera, et cetera. Real quick before we go any farther, I want everybody to tell you to get in log mode down here on the right. Log mode. You need to be in log mode so you can actually monitor the trend. The trend is the most important thing we're looking for, okay? Price is great, but the price is the last thing to worry about. We want to know where it's going, how long it's going there, and why it went there to begin with, okay? Those are the first questions to ask before what the price is, okay? Now, moving on. We see here we had this spike up into the overbought zone. Started right here, where my cursor is. So this gap right here. You would have been looking to sell there. Now... Did we sell? Yes, let's be hypothetical and say we did. So we missed out on some percentages here. Okay, it went up and kept going, and that sucked. 
so we would have missed out. Now, what if we waited for this thing to peak up, you know, and snap up? Well, it's hard to hard to catch that. Um, this is why I say when it starts to peak into the white zone to be looking to sell. Now, yes, you would have missed this, and that would have sucked. But you would have also bought way down here. Why? Because this is down here where it went into oversold. Okay, it was oversold, and it was right near this black line that I'm going to tell you about in a second. You've been buying here the whole time and riding this up. Uh, and it's been great and everything until you sold here. You missed out a little bit, whatever. Uh, either way, this is what you were looking for. You were looking for this thing to peek over into the overbought zone so you can find a place to get out. Okay, that was a sell hint. Um, now, this 40 line is what I like to call the action line. More often than not, you see price action fluctuate near the 40 on this scale right here, on the right, right near 40. More often than not, the price gravitates there and tends to hang out. See this little poke right there at the 40 line? Again, 40 line. All this price action right here kept hitting the 40 line, hitting the 40 line. It keeps happening over and over again, okay? It's just part of the indicator. That's the way it works. So, you know, you're looking for another place to buy in on Apple. Look what's happening. It's hitting the 40 line. Now, is this a good place to buy? If you look at the chart, maybe, but it's all going down, okay? It doesn't look so great. We could draw a trend line here and uh, see that maybe it's not, a, not the best time to buy. Maybe not the worst. Yeah, okay, see, we've broken out of this little downtrend right here. And we started to try to move up, but it hasn't moved up yet. Okay, it's just kind of sitting there. We'll see what happens. Um, in my opinion, this has more down ahead. Um, there's some gaps in the chart that need to be filled, uh, particularly one down here at $77. And there's another one down here at $61. These gaps need to close. That's going to suck. <clears throat> um, but regardless of that, we're hitting the 40 line. This could be a potential buy zone, okay? Now, where was a good buy zone? We've already talked about this here. But right here, when this stuck its nose down in here in the white zone, we should have been looking to buy, okay? You would have bought... I'll draw a line, vertical line here, that's horizontal and vertical, vertical line here. Now look, that would have told you to buy and it kept going down, and that would have sucked, wouldn't it? Again, we're just gauging it here, it's one indicator, we never use just one, uh, but I want to show you how it works. So, we come back up to this 40 line and we flirted with it and poked it and poked it and poked it. Now, an important spot here. The more you watch these videos, the more you're going to learn how these things work. But um, this is called a double bottom right here. Right here. Oops. Erase that. Put it back on the chart here. What you see right here is this thing broke the 40 line and then tested it twice. A double bottom. Boop, boop. Okay. This is a buy sign. Now, where is that in relation to the chart? Right where you needed to buy. You would have bought this area right here, and you would have wrote it up. How much would you have made? Let's say you bought $1,000 worth, and you wrote it all the way to this first line that told you to sell. You bought it, you wrote it all the way up, <clears throat> you bought a thousand dollars worth and you made a hundred percent profit. You made a thousand dollars just using this indicator alone. Now again, you're not going to want to just use one indicator. You're going to want to use multiple. Um, but this is one of my favorites for a reason, okay? Because it's extremely helpful in trying to find the trend in which way we're going, okay? Um, are there some places in here you may have sold? Yes, you may have sold this peak right here. That's a pretty nasty looking little peak right there, isn't it? All right, well, fine. Let's do that one. You made 50%. That's pretty good. That's $500 on 1000 It's pretty good. Um, either way, you're finding the trend. Sorry, had a little audio glitch there. Um, 
So anyway, is it a good time to buy? Maybe, maybe not. So now what I want to do is I want to add in another indicator, an indicator that we've already went over that will show you a little bit better how to work it with the RSI. And this is why, again, why we want to use more than one indicator because uh, when you do, uh, you get a little bit better confirmation. So I've already got the MACD down here and I'm just hitting it. I'm going to unhide it by clicking the little I right there. It unhides it and gives me uh, an ability to look at it. So I'm going to move it up here a bit. And let's move this up here a bit. All right, so let's actually make them much larger. How about that? Nice and large here so we can see very well what's going on. All right, so I've already got this circled for you so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. Right here, we had a bearish cross. The blue went through the orange, which is the MACD crossing the trigger line. Okay, that tells us, sell, get out. At the same time, we had this oversold RSI over here. All right, at the same time, it was peaked way up right here. So back here, you know, it told us, hey, let's get out. And the uh, MACD confirmed it for us. So this was sell. And the MACD crossed downward. That was a confirmation of sale. See how this works? You have two things telling you the same thing. It's good. The MACD has been going steadily down without crossing for quite a while now. You see this? Down. Never crossed each other and it's went all the way down into the pits of oblivion. Way down there. Never crossed. Now, right here, I told you earlier, this was a spot where we might have bought. Okay? Now, this is why you wouldn't have. Because the MACD told you, don't freak out and wait. Right here, it told you to buy. But the MACD was very much telling you to stay out. And it never crossed into a bullish move or a buy move. We didn't get a buy move till way over here. Okay, at the same time we got this buy move, right here, we had our double bottom. Really close to each other, okay? So this would have been our confirmation to buy. We'd have saw this bullish cross and said, hmm, I might need to buy here. We'd have looked at our RSI and we said, oh, look, we're over 40. That's good. We're getting a double bottom right here on 40. Hey, I've got confirmation. I'm good. I am think I'm going to buy now. And let's look at the price as such. All right, let's clean this RSI up here a little bit. We can see it a little better. Let's pull this MACD down so it's not so large. There we go. Let's scroll them in a little tighter. We'll get some price action up on the screen. There we go. Now, we had this bullish cross right here on the MACD. Okay. We had a clean bullish sign right here on the RSI as confirmation right about the same time this gap happened right here. That's good. So we'd have started our bar indicator here to tell us to buy here. And we'd have rode this all the way up until we saw our next sell signal. Wherever it was. Doesn't necessarily matter. Um, but Again, when you combine this with the MACD, we get signals that tell us when to start, when to stop. Okay, look, right here, at the same time this RSI peaked up, before that, look what the MACD did. It turned bearish right here. It broke downward. Okay, this is, again, why one indicator simply isn't enough to tell you the whole story. This is a clear uptrend, a clear uptrend. The MACD turned ugly on you and told you it was going down. The, just a couple days later, gave you a buy signal to come back up. At the same time, you're getting a sell signal from the RSI, right? So one indicator just isn't good enough. You need confirmation. Um, if you were a little shook here, you'd have sold this back here. And again, you still made you still made 68% on a thousand at $680. Hey man, high friggin' five, right? You made 680 bucks. Do you really whine about that? And I don't think you do, okay? I'm never, ever going to complain about profits. I don't care. If it's a dollar, it's a dollar more than you had, okay? 
So don't don't get upset and complain. Now, the other video you've watched was the 8 and the 21 EMA, which is probably one of the easiest and the best strategies that you can use to uh, buy and sell with. I mean, it's pretty doggone neat. So we pull that up real quick. And this would have told you, don't sell. If you had to use the number one strategy that I have put on the list, the 8 and the 21 EMA, it would have told you, don't sell, because we wouldn't sell till we're under the purple line. Do you see that under the purple line? It's not even close. You're in this to win it. You buy right here when this thing crosses the green line, which is the 8 EMA. It going through the 21, the green crossing into the purple, that's a bullish sign. That's a double confirmation for sure by that. And then you just ride this thing until it's not over the under the, still until it dips under the purple. Right here, it dipped under the purple. Even this, it didn't give you confirmation. Okay, you had one candle under purple. And after that, it got right back up over. Listen, these are the formulas to good trades. Okay, now likewise, what's happening over here on this end? Okay, now look, we have a bearish cross. We came down through. The 8 and the 21, we went under the purple. We had multiple candles under purple. That's bearish. That's a sell signal, okay? We'd be selling this right now. What does the other indicator say? Yep, overbought. What does the MACD say? Oh, MACD's turning down. We have three things right here telling us down. That's pretty good, okay? And that's just three indicators. We could keep going, and I'm not going to do that. just wanted to show you here, okay? How one indicator works in conjunction with the others. Again, this was about the RSI. Um, I just wanted to give everyone an example of how this works. Um, use the RSI in conjunction. Don't use it by itself. Uh, use it to give you an idea of what might be happening. That's the best way to think of it. Okay. Um, you want to you want to give yourself as much of a good chance you can at making a positive trade each time. You don't ever want to go negative. Um, confirmation is key. Be smart. Be wise. Um, we have a group of guys. If you'd like to join that, just let me know by messaging me or asking me or emailing me. My email is available for everyone. Um, there's, a dis there's a link to the Discord channel down here. You can join the Discord channel and ask us anything you'd like to ask. Um, other than that, guys, I thank you for watching. And I will put this on the indicator list, and we'll shoot you over to the next indicator on the next video. Uh, and uh, good luck trading. If you need anything, thanks. Peace.